Kelly from The Energy Boutique with your energy forecast for Tuesday, October 8th. So we have the moon in Sagittarius energy again here all day, which of course is working for us. It is the most positive, most optimistic type of energy that we could be sitting in. We're seeing the light, if you will, seeing a new mission, seeing a new purpose, seeing a new path, a new avenue that we're actually excited to explore. Now, today is the last day that Jupiter, who rules over the Sag energy, is going to be direct. He will be going retrograde here on the 9th at 21 degrees in Gemini energy. There's an astro forecast over this particular event. And of course, download your October energy guide for your zodiac sign and flip to this particular chapter in that workbook and capture what is going on in your life. Realize where this is going to impact your chart and your life the most. We have a very interesting dynamic building here today because of course, yesterday we moved into this pivot energy, moving out of the funk, out of the darkness. We started gaining little bits of details of clarity, started feeling that shift in our mood and our attitude. And as we kind of continue that particular pivot energy. It's definitely going to feel a little bit strange as we near the end of the day because of course Jupiter is preparing to retrograde. So with all of that being said there are 11 different aspects taking place here today. Eight of them are going to involve the moon. So the moon and Sag first going to semi square creating a little bit of tension and conflict with Pluto, the great transformer who is retrograde at 29 degrees in Capricorn energy. Again, Pluto will be going direct here this week. If you haven't listened to this week's Ascension forecast, I'm going to recommend you do so. They have a lot of impact. Pluto and Jupiter and the first quarter moon in Capricorn going to have a lot of impact on our mood, on our attitude as we get going here this week. And of course, with those major energy shifts, we can expect a lot of ascension symptoms to manifest in our physical form to illuminate where there are some energy blockages still alive and well within us. So take a listen to that. The moon semi squaring Pluto, it definitely doesn't feel good. It is a tension point. It is highlighting conflict. And a lot of it is again, because the moon in Sag has us projecting into the future has us dreaming the biggest dream possible. But it's a little bit unrealistic. And of course, with Pluto retrograde and Capricorn energy, we shouldn't be as focused on the future as the moon and Sag would prefer that we be because we need to be focused on what we need to close the door upon what we need to essentially totally demolish, totally destroy, totally remove out of our lives from now until November. Reason being, we're closing a 15 year chapter, our attention should be on the aspects of our physical lives, the physical form, our materialistic realm that are preventing us from moving on and moving forward. This is again, removing the materialistic aspects that the old version of self had manifested had brought to life had created that this new version of self has basically grown. So this particular tension point is going to highlight where it is that we want to think about the future, we want to be optimistic, we want to be confident that we're able to achieve what it is that we want to achieve. But realistically speaking, there's a negative narrative kicking around in our mental plane, in order for us to get a little bit more realistic with what it is that we have to clean up before we can go ahead and start creating something new. The moon and Sag then going to sextile beautiful interaction with the sun in Libra energy. So of course, anytime that the sun and the moon are coming together, there's going to be an aha moment, an emotional awareness of what it is that we need to do what it is that we need to pursue what it is that we actually want need and desire. So the moon in Sag being a fire energy and the sun in Libra energy being air, this has a huge potential for an aha moment for a spark of fire of flame to be reignited within us, especially with what it is that we want to do we want to pursue but where it is that we have to balance the scales in our physical realm in order to again, close the door on some old chapters, topics and themes and create the space for us to build something new in the place of the things that again, we have outgrown. 
Venus, the goddess of love, beauty, worth, pleasure, and money in the Scorpio energy is going to trine, which is a beautiful interaction, a growth type of energy with Mars, the god of war, ruling over our physical energy, our drive, our passion, our desires, even our anger in cancer energy. So this is water on water action. Even more than that, this is the feminine and masculine divine energies coming together. And this is a beautiful thing. First of all, the water energy kind of helps to cleanse us, purify us from a lot of the heaviness, a lot of the funk, a lot of the weight that we've been sitting in. Once that part's over, then it refreshes us. It rejuvenates us in our soul and in our spirit. But we love when Venus and Mars come together because there's this this alignment between the masculine and feminine energies within us and in alignment within the masculine and energies that we have in our relationship dynamics. Again, we're still very much in labor season. We are kind of reaching that 15 degree, that halfway mark, which means that we are finding a little bit more peace and harmony and calmness now than we have thus far in this season. This is also going to, again, have us reframe our relationship dynamics, reframe our wants, needs, and desires, reframe what it is that we need to let go of in order to actually build something new in the place of the things that we have outgrown. It triggers a new realization on what actually matters and what we truly desire. Now, this could be, you know, just emotional, mental needs. This could be materialistic needs. This could be just a new spark, a new excitement in our lives. Either way, there's a new creative energy coming into the forefront to kind of help us, again, redefine what it is that we want to do, what it is that we want to pursue, and at the same time, illuminate what we have to get rid of, what we have to close the door upon in order to do all of those things. This is definitely going to support a better interaction in our relationship dynamics. It puts us in a situation where we're kind of, again, seeing things, seeing the people, places, and things of worth, of value in our lives from a different lens. And it's putting us in a situation to get very focused, again, on the things that are bringing excitement, bringing passion, bringing inspiration into our lives. So it is definitely going to be a little bit of a pep in our step. We're going to feel a little bit more confident and optimistic with the relationship dynamics that for many of us haven't been going so smoothly. The moon in Sag is then going to make a very harsh interaction with Mr. Mars, which of course is going to knock the wind out of our sails. Uh, we have to understand that again, Mars in that cancer energy is kind of in preservation mode, in defense mode, in protection mode. The moon in Sag is a high vibe. It's again, very adventurous. It wants to explore. It wants to move out into new foreign territory. The cancer energy that Mars is in is like, nah, -uh. we're sticking to what is tried, tested and true here. Emotionally, you can go ahead. You can live in La La Land, but physically we're staying put. We're staying here. We're sticking to what is tried, tested and true. And we aren't really willing to take action and make moves to push ourselves in a new path and a new direction. The moon is then going to make a positive interaction though with Venus. So all of a sudden it's like a lighthearted thing, like, okay, so we're not willing to make any moves, that's fine. Well, let's get in touch with our heart space. What do we actually have to change? What do we actually have to transform in order to create a realm and reality that not only looks good, that feels good, that brings a sense of happiness and joy and pleasure and safety and security into our day-to-day -day lives. And of course, with Venus in the Scorpio energy that rules over transformation, we have to really examine the pull into a new direction in order to understand where we're being pulled away from old people, places and things, old aspects, old circumstances that the old version of self had created. We then have Mercury, ruler of the mental plane, ruler of information, communication, how it is that we express ourselves in this Libra energy, again, trying to see things from all angles, trying to see both sides of the coin, flip-flopping back between the pros and cons of all the things that we're trying to debate between. And of course, we would love to come to some sort of decision, some sort of choice point, but in Libra energy, we're not expecting to do that. Indecision reigns supreme. We have Mercury trining, beautiful interaction 
with Jupiter, the planet of growth, expansion, beliefs, abundance, blessings in this Gemini energy. Again, still direct for the moment, but preparing to go retrograde. So this trine is an air trine. And air energy just brings in a new air for us to breathe, new information for us to process, new ideas for us to kind of percolate on now, this particular energy, first of all, Jupiter is bringing the height, he's bringing the optimism, he's bringing the confidence, he's bringing the faith back, and that is going to do absolute wonders for our mental plane. Conversations are likely going to be highly stimulating, creating a lot of opportunity for light bulb moments to pop off, and there's this renewed sense of hope that we have no explanation for. We just know that when we're taking the time to think about our future, that we have a little bit more hope and faith that things are going to be working out, even though nothing has really changed to give us those types of indicators. It feels like we're able to see a little bit more of the big picture. We are kind of thinking more in that big picture type of broad spectrum. And we are definitely starting to see where there are little seeds of new ideas being planted that we could definitely get behind, that we could definitely push into creating new situations and circumstances for us to explore. Now, with Jupiter involved, he is pretty lucky. We could receive good news. We could maybe be in the right place at the right time. We could have a conversation with someone that just, again, pops off a new idea, a new light bulb moment. It definitely is a favorable aspect. And it's good because we're open minded. We are, again, trying to keep the most positive of mindset. And we just have a different perspective, a different view on the people, places and things that we haven't been feeling so good about. So let me give you a time stamp here because this is where things are going to change. 8.23 a.m. This is when we have the good juju from Mercury and from Jupiter. 10.36 a.m. Mercury is going to sit across from directly oppose Chiron, which of course is not going to feel good. It is going to knock our, our wind right out of our sails. It is going to bring that optimistic perspective down to a very harsh reality check. First of all, the way that this is being aspected because it's a opposition, it's not a great thing. Uh, we're focused more on the wounds than we are on the healing. And here's the thing about it. We could interpret a lot of conversations, a lot of feedback as criticism, as being attacked. We could automatically go on the defense. The problem is, is that we're misinterpreting the information coming in from people, places and things in our environment through the lens of the pain and trauma wound. And of course, there is no light with that lens. There is no positivity with that lens. And it means that we are losing ourselves to a negative ass narrative. Now, there is a major focus on weakness, on our vulnerabilities, on not being good enough, on not doing good enough. We really do start to kind of spiral in that way. And we start giving a lot of time, energy and attention to things that actually don't deserve it at all. And because this is like a major tipping of the scales, because again, we are in Libra season, we just went from a very positive mindset, very hopeful, very faithful in our futuristic steps, strategies, plans, dreams, visions, desires to a totally negative ass one. Now, speaking of one at 1.10 p.m., the moon in Sag is going to sit across from directly oppose its ruler, Jupiter which of course is going to magnify the negative ass narrative that we just slipped into even more than that, because the moon is our emotions. Now we're over exaggerating the negative ass narrative that we just fell in. Now we're hyper focused on all the things that aren't working, all the things that are going wrong, all the things that we think that literally are not based in reality, not based in truth. It's almost as if, you know, we start feeling Jupiter's shakiness, Again, coming to a standstill, preparing to retrograde, it almost feels like we're not seeing things clearly. We're not, again, kind of feeling things clearly either. 
And with this particular opposition, we're not feeling optimistic. We're not feeling confident. We lose the hope. We lose the faith. We lose our ability to actually ground, anchor, and root ourselves in reality. 1.27 p.m., we get a little bit of help because the moon then trines Chiron. So this is going to work in our favor. It's almost like, whew, okay. First of all, it is a fire energy. A fire trine means that the fire comes in and it burns away the heaviness, burns away the darkness, burns away the crap and the crud that just took over our mental plane and our heart space and really took us down a dark path, let's say. So that is going to be lifted. Then what happens is that the fire energy helps us to regenerate the spark, the fire, the flame that again helps us to see things from the positive lens, helps us to see that optimism, that confidence, that hope, that faith be restored. That is going to help us out. It is going to help us reframe that negative ass narrative that we just fell into, that negative emotional disposition that we just fell into. And we're going to pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and we are definitely growing in our ability to see that we can find ourselves in the darkness, but we do not set up camp there. We are sure as hell not moving there, okay? We're processing things a lot quicker than we ever been able to do in previous years because this new version of self, again, operating from the higher version of self, sees the attempt of those dark force energies to pull us back into bad situations, bad mental planes, bad, bad emotional states, and then quickly we're able to pluck ourselves out of it. So that's working in our favor. 1.54 p.m., the moon in Sag is then going to sextile beautiful interaction with Mercury, ruler of the mental plane. So now we have our heart and our head working together to say, uh-uh, we're burning whatever dark place we just found ourselves in. We're burning that down. We are just in a situation now where we understood how dark things could get and how fast that could happen. And we equally are recognizing how quick we're able to pluck ourselves out of that dark space and build ourselves back up to a positive mind frame, a positive emotional situation. Now, because the moon and Mercury, uh, heart space and head space, uh, because they are working together, and again, fire and air energy gives us a spark of creativity, gives us a spark of energy to renew, to rejuvenate, to regenerate that fire, that spark, that flame that we lost earlier in the day. It also rules over our ability to communicate. And so because we're in Libra season, because we're still focused on relationship dynamics, there is going to be a little bit of clarity that we find within ourselves to be able to articulate our thoughts and our feelings with confidence, with clarity, and actually communicate that outwardly to those that need to hear it. So again, there's going to be a positive shift, not only in our mood and our attitude, not only in our emotions and our inner dialogue, but there's going to be a positive shift in the way that we're communicating and the way that we're interacting with the people, with the world around us. So that was at 1.54 p.m. 11.23 p.m., this is going to be the last aspect of the day. So we sit in that positive emotional mental plane for you know, the better chunk of the latter part of the day. However, at 11.23 p.m., again, Eastern Standard Time, the moon in Sagittarius energy is going to make a very harsh interaction with Uranus, the Great Awakener, who is retrograde in this Taurus energy. So let me just remind you, Uranus being retrograde in this Taurus energy is supposed to be illuminating where it is that we have a death grip on the old where it is that we're holding on to the past for dear life because we truly are just waiting for something better to come around to knock on our door. Even though we understand that the universe requires us to take a leap of faith, meaning we have to remove the old aspects, the old people, places and things that the old version of self has created that the new version of self is no longer resonating with. We have to take a leap of faith and do that trusting that once we create the space for new things to actually be born and created in, that the universe will deliver something better in the place of the things that we're currently removing. We have to have that trust. We have to have that faith. But this is a negative interaction, which means that we're losing our positive mindset. We're losing that hopefulness, that element of renewed trust and faith. And what we're doing here 
is again, the moon in Sag is thinking so far into the future. Uranus is like, you know what? You need to stop that. You need to rein it in. You need to be present. We need to think about what we have to eliminate as far as the past creation goes in order to create the space for your present day self to actually start building your future goals, visions, and dreams in. So it comes with a little bit of a jolt of energy, a jitteriness, if you will. Uranian energy always affects the central nervous system because the Sag energy is a fire energy. Things can rapidly progress. And I would say towards the end of the day, we are going to be mentally and emotionally exhausted, but we're also going to see where it is that we have a little bit of a mental blockage. We're not able to kind of align ourselves with the goal, the vision, the dreams that typically speaking would excite us, would keep us focused on what we have to do, what we have to pursue, what we have to manifest. And instead, we start kind of focusing on where we're blocked, where we're restricted. And that Taurus energy that Uranus is currently retrograde in is highlighting the physical life, the physical form, the materialistic realm that you deal with each and every single day. There are aspects and elements, again, that you're dealing with from the old version of self. You're living in the old world right now that you need to boss up. You need to remove. You need to close the door on before you can lose yourself in la-la land. Conjuring up goals, visions, and dreams for the future self when the present day self has a mess from the past to clean up first. <laughs> <laughs> 